See if this gets your attention. A rich Saudi businessman suspected of funneling money to Osama bin Laden, who is also a suspected owner of a company that creates highly sensitive software for the FBI. Or how about this? A Muslim FBI agent accused of refusing orders to secretly record another Muslim suspected of terrorist connections. Well, tonight, two FBI agents come forward to say if all of that worries you, it should. They put everything at risk to give Chief Investigative Correspondent Brian Ross a disturbing account that the FBI has tried to keep secret. 10 o'clock last Monday morning in Chicago. Open up Brian's mic. This was the day. We are ready to roll tape. This was the hour. Stand by. This was the interview FBI headquarters in Washington feared was coming. Already have a seat right there. Two of the FBI's own, Special Agents Robert Wright and John Vincent, breaking ranks. You can't know the things I know and not go public. Finally telling the story they say the FBI has tried to keep secret from Congress and the American public. September 11th is a direct result of the incompetence of the FBI's International Terrorism Unit. No doubt about that. Absolutely no doubt about that. You're an FBI agent and you're saying that about the FBI. I know that, yes. Robert G. Wright, Jr. It's a long way from the day 12 years ago. Raise your right hand. When, as a law school graduate from Indiana, Robert Wright took the oath to become an agent of the FBI. I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. To protect America from all enemies, foreign and domestic. And you think you've tried to do that? Others tried to stop me, but I tried to do that. Wright's partner, John Vincent, joined the FBI 27 years ago, a young lawyer from South Dakota who would become one of the Bureau's most seasoned street agents before retiring a few days after this interview. Truthfully, if 9-11 had not occurred, we wouldn't be here. Really? Because on 9-11, we're here, because we see the danger. Their story begins in the mid-1990s, with growing terrorism in the Middle East. The two agents were assigned to track a connection to Chicago, a suspected terrorist cell that would later lead them to an Osama bin Laden connection. We had a cell in Chicago, right, and that was, that was the premise of how we got the investigation going. But Wright says he soon discovered that all the FBI intelligence division wanted him to do was to follow suspected terrorists around town and file reports, but make no arrests. The supervisor who was there from headquarters was right straight across from me and started yelling at me, you will not open criminal investigations. I forbid any of you, you will not open criminal investigations against any of these intelligence subjects. You're on the terrorism task force and you're told you will not open criminal cases? Yes. In 1998, al-Qaeda terrorists bombed two American embassies in Africa, killing more than 200 people. The agents say some of the money for the attack led back to the people they had been tracking in Chicago and to a powerful Saudi Arabian businessman, this man, Yasin Qadi, who had extensive business and financial ties in Chicago. Yet even after the bombings, the agents say headquarters ordered no arrests. Two months after the embassies are hit in Africa, they want to shut down the criminal investigation. They wanted to kill it. The move outraged the federal prosecutor in Chicago, who says agents Wright and Vincent were helping him build a strong criminal case against Cotty and others. There were powers bigger than I was uh, in the Justice Department and within the FBI that simply were not going to let it happen, and it didn't happen. Mark Flesner, now in private practice, says he still can't figure out why Washington stopped the case, whether it was Saudi influence or bureaucratic ineptness. I think there were very serious mistakes made, and I think it perhaps cost, it cost people their lives, ultimately. Perhaps most astounding of the many mistakes, according to Flesner and affidavits filed by Agent Wright, is how another FBI agent, who is Muslim, seriously damaged the investigation, telling Wright and Vincent he would refuse to secretly record one of Cotty's suspected associates, who was also Muslim. A Muslim doesn't record another Muslim. Right out of his own mouth. Five of us, six of us heard it. He wouldn't have any problems interviewing or recording somebody who wasn't a Muslim, but he could never record another Muslim. What do you make of that? Thinking back to the oath you took as an FBI agent. I was floored. I went back upstairs and I called FBI headquarters to tell them what had just happened. And the supervisor from headquarters says, well, you have to understand where he's coming from, Bob. I said, no, 
no, no, no, no. I understand where I'm coming from. We both took the same damn oath to defend this country against all enemies, foreign and domestic, and he just said no, no way in hell. Far from being reprimanded, the FBI promoted the Muslim agent to one of its most important anti-terrorism posts at the American Embassy in Saudi Arabia, handling sensitive investigations for the FBI in that Muslim country. The FBI says when it sent the Muslim agent to Saudi Arabia, it was unaware of the allegations or of two other similar incidents described to primetime by FBI agents in New York and in Tampa. In a statement to primetime, the FBI also defends the agent as making significant contributions, saying he had a right to refuse because the undercover recording was supposed to take place in a mosque. That's a complete lie, according to former prosecutor Flesner, who says a mosque was never part of the plan and that the FBI is covering up. What he said was it was against his religion to record another Muslim. I was dumbfounded by that response. As to Wright, the FBI says the decision to kill his case was appropriate at the time, something Wright continued to protest to his supervisor through early 2001. You know what his response was? I think it's just better to let sleeping dogs lie. This is January 2001. January 2001. Let sleeping dogs lie. Yeah, those dogs weren't sleeping. They were training. They were getting ready. On September 11th, the two agents watched in horror, worried that men they could have stopped years earlier were involved. And now the White House says they were. One month after the attacks, the U.S. government officially identified Yasin al Qadi as one of Osama bin Laden's important financiers, a specially designated global terrorist, the same man who years earlier, the FBI had ordered agents Vincent and Wright to leave alone. No surprise to you? No. No, there's no surprise there. We knew, yeah. Cotty, a multimillionaire with ties to the Saudi royal family, tells ABC News he can prove his total innocence repeatedly denying from his office in Riyadh any connection to Osama bin Laden or Al-Qaeda. Not even one cent went to Osama bin Laden. But just this month, Qadi was back in the news as agents, not FBI agents, but U.S. Customs agents, conducted a midnight search of a Boston company believed to be secretly owned and controlled by Qadi. The company, it turns out, provides computer software to the FBI and other federal agencies which means Cotty and his employees could have had access to some of the government's most sensitive secrets. In a vindication of what FBI agent Wright has been saying all along, the federal government now says it is pursuing possible criminal charges against Yasin Cotty. And there's, there's so much more. God, there's so much more. The Bush administration could hear from the agents yet. They say they're ready, if called, to testify before the newly appointed independent commission investigating why no one stopped the 9-11 terrorists in time.